Hi, I'm Warwick from Hot and Steamback, and this week we've got another FAQ video for you. Now, I do really like this format because it means that we can make content about the stuff that you are really asking us. And if one of you asked it, then probably there's a bunch of you who need to know, and it's better in a video than just deep down in the comments section. I'm a beginner, and I sometimes find that I can put a little bit too much paint down. It creates a bit of a watermark. What's the best ways to kind of fix that because it's become too wet? Okay, so the, the first thing is, is um, let's, let's, let's look at the, the sort of different applications that we could do this in. So if we use automotive art as an example of a non-porous uh, hard surface that you could be painting on, let's also look at painting on a canvas for an example of a porous surface that you could be painting on. And then let's look at modeling as an example of painting on a surface that has relief. So looking first of all at the automotive application, because it's a non-porous surface, you've got to be somewhat careful that you don't do this because it can be a little bit of a catastrophe. You're left with a couple of options. Um, if you over apply and you get this kind of like pooling and where the paint can get pushed around, an extreme example of this would be some kind of a spider. The best solution for that with water-based acrylic, if everything under it has already dried, is a gentle quick wipe with the damp cloth. Okay, with a clean damp cloth, very quick, just in that area. See if you can entirely get it off. Okay, try to do that. But obviously that's risky because if the paint underneath that hasn't completely set, then you might just ruin everything that you've done. So only if you're totally, totally confident that everything underneath that is not only dried, but cured, then you can think about that. In that instance, probably the best thing you can do is just really wait for it to be completely dry and then try to work over it and, and fix it from that way. But I think in that particular application, you've just got to be really careful that you don't do that. And so the way to avoid doing that, by the way, better avoided than fixed, the way to avoid that is as you're painting onto the surface, as soon as you start to see a satin sheen on the area that you're painting, that's enough. You don't ever want to get wetter looking or glossier looking than that because then the paint can become mobile and get pushed around by the air pressure. So satin is the most you ever want to get to in terms of how wet it looks on the paint surface. When it gets to that, just get over there, blow it with a bit of air only, and then continue on. So I hope that helps that application. Canvases, it's very hard to make this happen because the surface is porous, so it tends not to happen when you're painting on a canvas. In the modeling application, again, it's a mindset thing. What did you buy when you bought the model? You basically bought surface relief. So one of the things that I think should be foremost in the mind of anybody who's looking to paint a model is I don't want to lose the mold detail that I paid for when I bought this model. That might even be one of the reasons why you've chosen to use the airbrush instead of using a paintbrush. So again, same thing as the automotive guy. You don't want to see anything more than a satin in terms of the gloss level that you're creating on that. Otherwise, you're starting to get too wet. If you do get an over application and it starts to look glossy and it starts to go mobile on the paint surface, Again, the best thing you can probably do is push the trigger forward, use the air only to try to dry it off and push it away so that you don't have a build up in one spot. Then as soon as it's dry, go back in and overpaint that. But it's really best avoided. And so I'd prefer to answer the question, not really talking about what you do if it happens, but I'd rather answer the question in terms of like a, an effective strategy for avoiding it. And the best way to avoid it is, is as soon as you see a satin sheen you're wet enough, you don't want to go wetter than that. Sometimes I can feel and hear the airbrush acting differently and it might spit or splatter. Is there any like tips you've got to identify when that might happen so I can avoid splattering onto my miniature that I'm actually trying to paint? Okay, so I, I really love this question. And the reason is, is because airbrushing is not just painting with the sense of sight. Um, to, to use your ears as well, can really, really help you in understanding your airbrush and getting the best out of it. I've talked about it before, uh, I, think, uh, I think in one other video, about the sound of the airbrush. And what you'll notice is, is that before what you just described happens, like if you allow your airbrush to get to the point where it's capable of producing a little bit of a, uh, an unintended spatter, for example, that has almost certainly been preceded by getting some color drying on the tip of your needle. Um, and obviously you can see that. So one of the things that we've 
we've uh, brought into all the airbrushes in our range here at Harder and Steenbeck because we think it's a critical, critical tool in airbrushing is every Harder and Steenbeck air cap or needle cap now that we do with our 2024 models has got three properties that are key. One, you can always see the tip of the needle. Two, you can always clean the tip of the needle, you know, without stripping or interrupting your painting process. And thirdly, the needle tip is always protected. Now, that's super important because when you're painting detail, you always will tend to get some form of what we call tip dry, where you get a bit of paint drying on the needle tip. That changes the shape of the needle tip. The needle tip becomes more uh, prone to collecting more paint, and then it starts to grow. And eventually it grows to the point where one of two things will happen. Either you'll pull back your, your trigger, and some of that paint will scrape off into the nozzle mouth and become what is then a clog. Bad day, don't want that. Or um, you could get some of that paint, flick off as a clump, and then you'll see it landing on your work as probably something that you don't want to be there. So there's two ways of detecting this. One, by regularly just looking in the side of our air caps to just check to see if there's any dried color on your needle tip. Okay, so like I say, one of the big, big features that we've introduced with all of our 2024 models is right from the Ultra all the way up to the Infinity, you'll always be able to see that needle tip. So use that feature and look at it regularly. However, the other way that you can detect that tip drying is starting to happen is by listening to your airbrush. So what you should hear when you're painting is obviously when it's air only, you'll hear a similar sort of sound. But when you pull that trigger back, you should hear this beautiful, smooth, mellifluous kind of sound of paint smoothly flowing out over the needle tip and just atomizing off. And it should be quite a soft, pleasant sound to hear. As you start to get paint drying on your needle tip, that sound becomes a little bit more rough, kind of like a little bit grumpy sounding. You'll know, like you'll hear the difference. As Soon as you hear that, look at that needle tip because I can guarantee you it's gonna need cleaning. Depending on which airbrush you have, um, governs how you clean it. If it's the Ultra, you'll pick up a, a paintbrush, uh, something bigger than a number six is ideal, and just poke it in the holes on the side of the air cap to clean up that needle tip. If it's uh, the Evolution, like this one here, you can just clean it by pinching, and the same for the Infinity. Prevention is always better than cure, so pay attention to the look of your needle tip, pay attention to the sound of your airbrush, and then this whole thing of, you know, these terms that people tend to use when they talk about airbrushing, spattering, clogging, all of them are unnecessary if you just obey these simple painting practices, and we think that we've really made it possible to make it a simple, you know, kind of minute by minute thing that you do all the time that you're painting with our new 2024 models. But the goal is really that we want to eliminate it from your painting experience. And we, we really think that we've pretty much achieved that. So as long as you're paying attention to it and using those features, you can make that stuff not exist in your airbrushing experience, which is just really what we've all been <laughs> hoping and dreaming for for many, many years in my case. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks so much for interacting with us on the channel. It's so useful for us to have your comments and questions on the channel because we know what information you need from us. Any question that you ask, I promise we will answer it. Even if you leave us a comment without a question, we'll still give you a response. Probably just a little heart to say thanks for joining us. See you on the next one.